Hello brother and sister Christ. I want to do a quick video because I just really want to thank a brother and sister in Christ in Belgium for really they sent me a, a, a package and it was amazing. They saw at the time I didn't have this shirt on and this package I got to look at it a little bit brother and sister in Christ um, but then I had to put it to the side because I deal with a lot of family and everything that I've been going through in the last month. Um, but this was pretty amazing, and I wanted to share it with the brethren what they did for me. Okay, they sent me a, a, like almost like what I call in the military we call a care package, where my mom would send me a box of stuff from the state side that I couldn't get when I was overseas, and we call it a care package. And it's almost like this is a care package, but um, they saw this shirt that I used to wear before this, the sweater. It was fading, and it was looking pretty bad. We couldn't really read the words that well. Uh, the one I'm wearing, I found this that I bought as a backup, and I, I'm one of those guys that I like to wear something to death, and then I'll switch it out. I need to switch things out sooner. Um, but King James Version, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, John 17, 17. So I had this in there, and I found it, I said, okay, I'm going to switch it out and um, start wearing this. The old one's starting to fade, but it's still wearable, so I still wear it. It's just, that was just, and then they sent me three of these. I think it was three. They may look exactly like the one I had. I like the one I had. The King James Bible 1611 authorized version. Okay. I like this one too, but they just see KJV and they just think, well, it's a verse. It's a Bible verse. It could be any version. They don't really take it seriously. But when I walk around with this, I got a lot of people asking me questions about the King James Bible. Why do you have something that just says King James Bible 1611 authorized version? What's the big deal? You know, and it was a great uh, conversation starter. Now people see the verse and say thumbs up to the verse, but they don't realize how serious it is for that it comes from the King James Bible. Okay, so they gave, they said they had to hand do this to make it look like it. The, the sewing on, or the ironing on the letters and stuff. I don't know how it's done, but this was amazing. I got three of these in the hoodies. During the winter, I like wearing hoodies. Uh, during the summer, you'll see me wear collar shirts, uh, but it still gets windy around here. So if it's a windy day, even during the summer, I'll wear a sweater or I have a little windbreaker uh, when I go into town. But I love this, it's great, uh, especially because it's cold a lot down, most of the year um, on, in town. But this was such a blessing. They sent me three of these because I couldn't get them at the store anymore that I once was purchasing them online. I had brethren come to me, where do you get that shirt? I was like, I'm sorry, brother. The uh, the internet site that I was going to, the webpage, uh, they, they closed. They're no longer making Bible, King James Bible shirts. So I had to show them some others like this one where I bought this one. and uh, But they didn't have this version. Where I mean, this type where just King James Bible, 1611 authorized version. Okay, so I, they, they sent me three of these, which was amazing. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to have all these hanging up eventually because I'm just now getting to them again. But I was able to look at them. And I got excited when I looked at them. Um, they sent me some gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Victoria saying hello, everybody. That's Victoria. They sent me some gloves. They're really nice. Um... Really knitted. I like knitted things. Where, like look like they're hand knitted. I know it's probably machine knitted, but it still looks kind of hand knitted. Victoria! She's getting a little restless because we're doing our videos back to back. Trying to get these videos out. They sent me two hats. Now the KJV thing, on my old hat, the way I wear these hats, people think I'm weird. I'll wear the KJV in the back here because I really don't like anything right here. And, and it's not a bad thing. You're not in sin if you have a hat that has... It just bothers me because I started learning more about the, the world and the end times. And the mark of the beast is going to be here. It's going to be in the forehead or on the hand. And when you get used to having things here and here... Because I've seen people have tattoos now that start at their hand. You know, not, not their wrist and down their arm. It's They, they have them on their hands. It's, it's now becoming a normal thing to have tattoos on your hand and to have things on your forehead. And I'm not saying you're in sin, because some people have hats, baseball caps and stuff like that. 
but me personally, I like to wear it on the back side. So it's King James here, but it's not right here. <laughs> but I love these. I really do. So thank you, brother and sister in Christ, for these. It's such a blessing. We gotta keep going. I'll get into well, I'll get into it right now. Brother and sister in Christ that sent me this. It's the law of the Lord, the Ten Commandments, and it goes through, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. Who's Jesus? The Lord thy God. Okay. If a man love me, he'll keep my words. But they gave me this, and the paper was felt amazing, this poster of the Ten Commandments, and it goes through the Ten Commandments and says where it gets at Exodus 20th, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, and it breaks them up into the Ten Commandments. And I was able to find a frame for it, and I'm going to hang it up right here. So eventually it's going to be up on the wall right here for me to see as I'm here doing my Bible studies and everything. I, I love looking at stuff like this when you walk around the house. A, it keeps your mind and your heart on Jesus Christ, especially when your mind likes to wander. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. And this was a great blessing. I, Like I said, I found the frame for it when they were asking if you're going to find a frame. The Lord helped me find a good frame. It's a good solid frame, and it's going to look amazing right there. This was also one of the gifts that they, they sent me. Um, bookmarks. The uh, Psalms 121 has different Bible verses. Uh, the Word of God among all nations. Okay. So they, they sent me some bookmarks. Now, I'm not into... I, told, I, I like to drink tea during the, the, during the um, winter months when it gets really, really... Uh, hot, or not hot, opposite of hot, cold. The winter months when it gets really cold, I like hot tea. I'm not a coffee drinker. Some people are, I'm not a, I'm not a coffee drinker. But they did this for me, <laughs> which was great. Uh, little coffee, uh, or tea, I'll use it for tea, that says King J KJV, Bible Believing, God Fearing Ministries, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through, or 15, 3 through 4. Okay? They, they gave me two. If I ever had a chance to have a brother in Christ over, or, you know, if I have family, I can use these and have them sent from, like I said, they won't listen. I, I said in another study, I, my family have already tried witnessing to them all, and they won't listen to me. They just, they won't. Um, so, I love them to death, but maybe just keep planting seeds, keep planting seeds. Okay. I'm not here to push them away, but... I'm not going to change my life and try to backpedal for them. So that was that one. This one, the poster, it's folded up now that Peter Ruckman did about if any man be in Christ, old things are passed away, all, all things become new. They put that, I don't know if it will come through, but they put that on one of the, the mugs too, which is pretty neat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do like uh, hot tea and drinking hot tea. So, and then this, they were worried about this surviving the trip. So, this one I have to get up and walk around. Oops. This, I like I said, I haven't had a chance to set anything up. I'm really dealing with family. So just now getting to this, and it just, oops, don't want to hurt it. I, I really like this. Mm -hmm. It looked like it might have gotten, hopefully not damaged. Still in one piece, but it looks like it's a little chip. That could be how it was made, which is great. It's fine. It's okay. Still in one big solid piece. But it's a rock. It's, it looks like a slate of rock. Okay. And I'll come over there in just a second, but I want to read the bottom. It says, thank you for... They're thanking me again for... Because uh, I want my rewards in heaven, but... Thank you for sending the beautiful King James Bibles to us and our family. As a token of our gratitude, we would like to, to gift you this beautiful photo of you and Victoria made on a slate by both of us. This is a slate from Belgium. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a gift. I love rocks. I collect rocks. I collect uh, sea glass, agates, uh, beach stuff, like shells. 
Keep working for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let your ministry at light in the dark world. Guide the brothers and sisters to the truth and infallible, and infallible word of God described in the King James Bible. No, it says it's in the King James Bible. The word of God is in. We'll get this in another study, but it's in the King James Bible. There's nothing wrong with saying King James Bible. Um, right in the King James Bible. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. This used to be my favorite verse. It still is, but it was, I was using the verse from uh, an NIV as a false convert for the longest time. Okay. And uh, I'm going to come up and come around. Get up a little close on this one. Let's see if we can get up a little close. So what it was is a, they put a picture on a slate of rock. That's why it looks chipped on the edges. It's part of the look. I don't know if you can get that, but it's the, the chipped edges is part of the look. But they got a picture of me when I was talking about prayer requests with Victoria, showing you Victoria's doing better and she's getting around. You know, the only thing that lasts forever is God's word. Even we deteriorate over time. But Victoria's not going to be here forever. But that was just such a blessing. And then it's got two little things right here. Uh, almost like little feet, legs, that this is supposed to hook into, which is a great idea. Let's see. That's the way. Okay. I had to do it the right way. I am slow sometimes when it comes to things, but this is supposed to set just like that, and it'll set on your desk. This was pretty amazing. I have a slate from Belgium, and they put the pictures and everything, so if I ever, you know, I praise the Lord that he lets me live here, but if I ever have to give up this home and go somewhere else, whether it's ministry related, financially related, um, just wherever the Lord wants, he takes me. I have a picture now that will give me a good memory. I can still see part of the deck on the picture. It's a great picture. I thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for this. I really do. Okay, this, I wanted to share this with the brethren. The, they went out of their ways. They could have just, you know, a simple thank you would have been good. But they went completely out of their way. And it was done in a personal way. You know, the hats, they saw the hats that I wore. Um the sweaters that I was wearing. So, I like the slate, and I like what's written on the back of the slate, and I like this. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna have it hanging over there. So, I like everything you got that the Brother and Sister in Christ from Belgium sent me. Um, Brother and Sister Christ, this is, is joy. Okay, this, is, this brings a lot of joy and happiness to every once in a while you could be feeling down, and I was, I was feeling down, and I was like, ugh. You know, you get those times where you feel down. Am I really doing anything for the Lord? Am I making a dent in, in the law, leading people to Christ with this lost world? Am I making a dent in the body of Christ as far as trying to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ? That's my heartfelt desire is that this is your foundation, that you're hiding the Word of God, Okay, which can be found in the King James Bible, the Word of God for English-speaking people, the Word of God, that you're hiding the Word of God in your heart and that you're living every day. And that's what it means to look for Jesus Christ to come back any day because you're looking for Jesus Christ to come back every day. You're taking His Word, you're hiding it in your heart, and you're living it. That's what I want for the brethren. Okay, I want to see people get saved. And I want to see people who are truly saved and born, born again to get their lives right with the Lord, to get their heart right with the Lord, so their relationship with the Lord is as strong as mine, if not stronger than mine. Okay, there's times mine gets weak, <laughs> my walk with the Lord. There's a time where it's strong. I want your walk with the Lord to be strong. I want you to be a light in this dark world. I do, brothers of Christ. So sometimes when it feels like I'm coming down hard, it's because I'm trying to motivate you that, that this is the foundation. This is absolute truth. Not this. This is. Okay? And like I said um, in the last video, I was talking about how I talk, I'll talk. i talk with anybody on, on um, Skype video chat, and we go through the scriptures and we find out where 
I'm wrong and the scripture's right, or where you're wrong and the scripture's right. But one thing I can always guarantee you, brothers and sisters, Christ, the scriptures are always right. They're always right. Okay? This is your foundation. And that's my big push. This is your foundation. Um, I get people that come back and they respond with feelings and opinions, and I get them back to this. Make sure this is the foundation, not feelings and opinions. I get people that are PWCs. Remember those, brothers and sisters, Christ? It's been a while. Maybe, I can't remember the last time I used that. The PWC, Polly won a cracker. They act like parrots. Someone else said it, and it sounded good, so therefore I'm going to say it. But does it come from here? I had it out recently with a brother in Christ that was PWCing a lot of stuff trying to justify Christmas, but it wasn't coming from here. This is the final authority. This is our foundation. Not me. Not the words, of the wisdom of this world. Okay? Uh, God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. Okay? This is the foundation. And that's the point. Words have meaning. I like to put this ministry is about prayer, provoking prayer, getting you to pray more. Especially in these last days, brothers and Christ, we need to be praying, pray, pray, pray with all our heart. Okay? Uh, you need to be reading the Bible more, hiding God's word in your heart more, and living it. Being a light to this lost world. Okay? Being an encouragement, not just a light to the lost world. When you're a brighter light than a lesser light, I'm talking about like someone who's newly saved or someone who's backpedaling, you, brothers and sisters in Christ, can be a bigger light to me to help me. Like I say, you're this light that shines so much and I'm starting to fade. You come over and stand next to me and you start encouraging me to start shining more. Get that stuff out of your life. That things that you're getting in the way of the brethren, uh, your fellowship with the brethren, that's getting in the way of you being in ministry, that's getting in the way of your walk with the Lord, that's getting in the way of your marriage, whatever it is, you can be an encouragement to each other, brothers and sisters in Christ, by letting this shine through you with how you take this, hide it, the Word of God, and hide it in your heart and live it. All right. This ministry has always been about words have meaning, Okay, and that uh, you need to live for Jesus Christ every day, pray every day. Okay, that's I just that's my whole encouragement to you. And in these last days, brethren are falling away. I remember when I knew, was newly saved, I just nonchalantly copied what a parody of what someone else said when they say they're dropping like flies. Oh yeah, yeah, they're dropping like flies. But I really didn't truly understand it until now. I see it. We had a great man of God recently that he, he turned his back on brethren, stabbed brethren in the back, promoting gossip, backbiting and whispering. Great man of God, loved the Lord, loved his word, started out really strong. And it's like, oh Lord, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to fall like that. I don't want to get so prideful and so arrogant like that. Right? It could happen to me. It could happen to any of us. How do we prevent that from happening? Humbling ourselves, truly humbling ourselves, and this is the final authority. True grace for brethren. How, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but true grace for the brethren, brothers and Christ. How many times have you heard someone say, I've had way too much grace for that man, or that woman, or that person? Someone who makes that statement doesn't know what grace is, or, for, or has forgotten, I'll say it that way, or has forgotten what true grace isn't something you earn. I didn't earn God's grace. I don't deserve God's grace. Grace is something you give when it doesn't deserve. When you hear someone say, I've had way too much grace, what you're saying is, is now all of a sudden something in their relationship has changed where the person that's saying, I've had way too much grace for this person, is saying this person is no longer worthy of my grace. They've forgotten what grace is. Grace isn't something that you're worthy of. Okay. When you have grace for someone, a whole other study, but it's not something you earn. It's not something you deserve. Okay, You can lose your trust. I used to trust that man, and he's lost that trust, and now he's got to earn it back. Yeah. But grace? You know, they start messing, they're messing up what grace is. They're messing up what true charity is. Self-sacrifice. Charity no longer is self-sacrifice. Charity is you 
sacrificing everything so I can do what I want, live how I want, and believe what I want, and I'm not having to do any self-sacrifice. Yet I have charity. That makes no sense. They're messing up what charity is, brothers and sisters Christ. And, and uh, we need to have more charity for one another, self-sacrifice. Right? We need to have more grace for the brethren. Okay? I need to have more grace for my... I need to have grace in the sense for my, for my lost family members in the sense that I've preached the truth to them. That was my grace. Trying it again. Every once in a while, I'll try again. They don't deserve it. I've already done it once. That's all they deserve is me preaching the truth once to them. That's it. But when you do it twice, three, four, they don't deserve it. But that's the grace we have for them, trying to preach truth to them. Preach truth to them again and again. Uh, the brother in Christ that has turned his back on me, I've tried preaching truth to him. Oh, I only had to do it once. Even after he, st he stabbed me in the back way back in the past, I still kept loving him, kept showing grace for him, charity for him, preaching truth to him, forgiving him. But, brother says Christ, I thank you for this. I don't want to get off too much. Thank you for this. My whole point is, is that this is the final authority. Not me. Hide this in your heart. God's Word. God's perfect written Word in English, which can be found in the King James Bible for English-speaking people. Okay? This is the foundation. Words have meaning. We're going to do another study to talk about some words. But words have meaning. Okay? Uh, I guess I could say it a million times, but I just... Thank you, thank you, thank you for this, brother and sister in Christ that sent this to the ministry. Um, thank you for the encouragement. There's, like I said, there's just times where I get down. I get beaten by brothers in Christ that I do believe are saved, but I get beaten down. Um, I get encouraged, but in these last days, it just seems like everybody wants to be distracted and fight about what's going on in the world, politics, or people are fighting over things that aren't worth fighting over, like the word Bible. Um, Christian and stuff we're going to talk about in another study um, people are wanting to fight over flesh trying to justify fleshly things like Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games uh, I call them holidays holidays um, people that have covetousness which is idolatry they're trying to defend their idols in their life and they don't want to give up those idols and it's like at one time it wasn't covetousness. It was just a blessing from the Lord. We get to live this way. We get to have these things. But over time it's like we need these things. We need to live this way. And we deserve to have these things. We deserve to live this way. And I don't care who I have to hurt or betray so I can have these things. It becomes an idol. Don't let things become an idol, brother Jesus Christ. Don't let things become an idol in your life. This is all great, but none of this is not. This isn't an idol. This is a reminder. It's going to be set in here to remind me. Remember what the Bible says. The laws of God are our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Why did I get saved? Because I was a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. This proved it. That I was a dirty, rotten, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserved to go to hell for breaking God's commands, sinning against God, my Creator. It's a reminder. Don't let things become an idol. Right? So thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for these things. And uh, I thank the brethren that send me letters out of the blue, where I get a letter in my P.O. box out of the blue, or, or a package like this, or an email of encouragement and, you know, prayer requests and stuff like that. I just, it's an encouragement to those of us in ministry. It lets us know that you guys are, are listening. We're, we're making a difference, in other words. I want, to, I want, I want, remember it's a want, it's not a need. I want to feel like I'm making a difference in the body of Christ. That I am being a servant to the body of Christ. Not a burden and uh, not a bad example. You know, and I have been a bad example sometimes, but, you know, that I'm an encouragement to the body of Christ. I'm a light to the body of Christ, that I'm helping the body of Christ, pointing you guys in the right direction. Okay? So, and this is the foundation. Okay? So, we'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this gift, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's very personable. It took a lot of thought, and 
It's stuff that I will use and I will be grateful for. Very, very grateful for. This piece of slate, which is amazing. And that poster. So thank you, thank you, and all the things you cut me, but this is my two favorite. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Sis Christ, who support this ministry with prayer, with letters. Okay, and sometimes you guys will send me stuff. I had a brother in Christ that I showed a video way back when he sent me a walking stick. So when I do my walk and talks and try to hold it, I still shake a little bit, but not as much. If I can hold it to my chest as I'm kind of walking a little bit, it kind of helps to hold it here. I don't shake as much as holding it up here. Still shake a little bit. I apologize for that. But brethren do see the ministries. They see what's going on in the ministries. They see sometimes there might be a need or something that might be helpful or just a gift. And it's grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I thank the Lord first for encouraging me to keep living for the Lord and to keep preaching the truth no matter what happens, whether whether there's a disagreement between brethren or, you know, a disagreement with the lost world. We are struggling with the lost world like I have recently. We just keep continuing and continuing to live for the Lord and to serve Him as best we can. Right? So I'll say it again, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.